Hi, I'm M from 21 Readers. In today's reading vlog, I'm reading two dark YA books. I'll be reading The Chandler Legacies by Abdi Nazemian, which is a dark YA contemporary, and I will be reading These Deadly Games by Diana Urban, which is a YA mystery thriller. Both of these are new releases. They just were released in February of this year. I'll be listening to both of them on audio. I will have timestamps in the description for each of the books, as well as for my final rating at the end of the video. Here we go. I'm starting with The Chandler Legacies first and These Deadly Games second. Update time, I'm 33% of the way through the Chandler Legacies, and now I can tell you what it's about. We're following five students who attend a private high school boarding school, and they're all trying to get into this elite writing club called The Circle that has a lot of secrets surrounding it, but is also very coveted. So we're following those five POVs of them trying to get into the circle. Now I'm going to get into my likes and dislikes. For likes, I'm gonna go with the writing style. The characters feel very lived in and very distinct from each other. So it's reading more like an adult than a YA for that reason. That's my favorite part of the book so far is this writing style, the way he's writing about these kids' inner feelings. I'm enjoying reading about the setting of the boarding school and the tone of the campus. For dislikes, I'm gonna put too many POVs. At this point, I feel like five POVs is too many because because we're a third of the way through and we've only gotten to hear from each POV once. And I think I'm enjoying the two male POVs the most. Their names are Ramin and Freddy. So far, not a lot has happened in the plot, just them applying to the circle. Now that we're gonna get more into what these circle meetings are gonna be about, I'm looking forward to more group scenes. I'm looking forward to finding out why they applied to the circle. All right, let's find out what happens next. Update time, I'm 66% of the way through the Chandler legacies and I'm still enjoying it. The middle section read more like a slice of life story among these five students and their time in the writing circle. They're continuing to develop their writing with this professor. And as the reader, we're slowly learning about some of the things that have happened on campus to affect these five students. And as the five students are learning more about what their peers have experienced while attending this private board school, they're grappling with what they should do with that information. As far as likes, I'm enjoying the writing style the best because these five characters are still feeling very lived in and like these are things that they have authentically experienced. They're reading more like adults in terms of the level of complexity of their thoughts, whereas typical YAs tend to read more juvenile. This is very sophisticated writing, so it's the writing style that's mainly keeping me compelled. And the injustices that are happening to the characters, some of them are darker than others and have made me like a tad emotional. Depending on how some of these things play out, I could see myself tearing up more at the end, but some of the reveals about what these students have experienced on campus have definitely been more dark and emotional than I anticipated. As for dislikes, I would still say that there's too many POVs. I think one of the girls could probably be taken out so that there was only four POVs. The middle part of the book was definitely more dark and emotional than the first part of the book, which leads me to believe the last part will be the most emotional and heavy. I'm definitely curious how much of an emotional impact this story will have on me, but for now I'm just enjoying my time in these characters' heads on this campus. All right, let's see how this one wraps up. Update time. I have finished the Chandler Legacies and I'm going to be giving it four stars. This book ended up having Having a lot to say regarding abuses of power in boarding school settings and the systems that are in place to continue that abuse. The exploration of the abuse is what I'm going to remember the most about this book. The whole book was pretty slow paced except once we got to the end there was a lot of things thrown at you that really threw off the pacing. Things were wrapped up very quickly despite having this slow burn character development for the rest of the book so the last section of the book didn't really fit the tone of the first section. The author's note was very heartfelt and it talked about how his lived-in experiences tie into some of the things the characters experienced. I'm going to remember specifically the character of Ramin, who is the character who's from Iran coming to America for this boarding school. I think I would have preferred just having a book from Ramin's perspective. The other point of views weren't as necessary and weren't as memorable. However, I do understand why they were included so that the exploration of abuses of power could be extended to fit multiple students, not just Ramin. The writing style almost reads literary fiction, so I would recommend this to people who like YA and literary fiction. So if you're looking for a boarding school setting with beautiful writing, I would recommend this to you. Also, many of the main characters identify as LGBT, so this is also considered an LGBT YA contemporary fiction. I immediately checked to see if this author's other book, Like a Love Story, was available at my library and it is. And so I definitely want to read that soon because I really liked the writing style. Alright, on to my second book, a YA mystery thriller, These Deadly Games by Diana Urban. 
Update time. I am a third of the way through these deadly games and now I can tell you what it's about. In this book we're following our main character Crystal who is very into this one video game and she has this group of five friends and they're trying to go to this regional video game tournament. However, as Crystal and her friends are preparing for this video game tournament, she finds out through an anonymous text that her sister has been taken captive and that she has to play these deadly games in order for her sister not to get killed. So instead of preparing for this video game tournament, Crystal now has to do all of these demands from this anonymous person in order to get her sister back. My likes so far for this are that it's happening all in the span of one day, so the book is going by very fast, and the demands that are being made by the anonymous texter are on the more dramatic or intense side of the stuff that she has to do, which is keeping me interested. Those are my two likes, and I do have a lot of dislikes. So far, the main character and all of her friends are very one note. The fact that they all blend together make me kind of not really care if anything bad happens to the friend group. Luckily, I'm not actively hating the book or annoyed by the book since it is going by very fast. If this was feeling like a chore to get through, I would definitely be more annoyed, but since it is going by pretty fast, I'm not as annoyed by it. However, I already know this is going to be a very forgettable book unless something drastic changes. I'm hoping some of these twists continue to get more dark and build up to something that's a little bit more shocking to make this book a little bit less forgettable. Update time. I'm 66% of the way through these deadly games. Things have definitely taken a turn. Things have gotten way more intense in terms of the stakes of the games and the tasks that this anonymous person is making our main character do in order to get her sister back. And then segueing into the dislikes, I'm still feeling quite disconnected to the characters. I don't really care what ends up happening to any of them. This book is most likely going to be forgettable since the characters are very forgettable. I'm assuming that this is just going to be a quick thriller that I forget within a day, but we'll see how this ending plays out. Maybe the twist will surprise me. Update time. I finished these deadly games and I'm going to be giving it two stars. While I didn't predict the ending, it was still ultimately forgettable in things I've seen before. And this thriller, despite being a new release, wasn't doing anything new. Like it could have been published five years ago and I wouldn't have known the difference. And since I do read so many mystery thrillers, both YA and adult, at this point I'm looking for something new in order to stay in my memory. So the character weren't memorable and the plot wasn't very memorable which is why I'm going to be giving it a two-star rating and I do think I'm going to be stopping reading this author since I didn't really like her first book and I didn't really like this one either. I could see she was trying to develop her characters a little bit more in this one in terms of some of the personal issues that they were going through. I would recommend this book if you want a quick thriller to get through in less than 24 hours that's kind of mindless. It's not going to stay with you but it's still just a quick time. However, there's many other YA mystery thrillers that I would recommend over this one and this one was pretty below average and forgettable. To wrap up, I gave The Chandler Legacies by Abdi Nazemian four stars and I gave These Deadly Games by Diana Urban two stars. Tell me in the comments your thoughts on any of these books or if you plan on reading them and for now thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!